is the man that I've flown across the country to meet. Yeah, that's right. Is there anything that I can't ask him? Why do you ask him that? Is there any question you can't answer? I have no comment about rock music. <laughs> Neither do I. <laughs> it's amazing. It's almost haunting that he is looking directly yeah. into my eyes. Yeah, this new technology and the person himself uh, will come through as you'll experience. I, was I quickly forget that I'm talking to a recording of Pinkus, and I'm drawn into his stories about the family he lost and his twin sister with the golden hair. Is there one thing that stays with you more than anything else about the Holocaust? I mean, the thing that pains me more than anything else, I can't remember anything about my sister. Before the war, during the war, what she looked like, there's just one thing left. That's the braid. Pinkus, do you have any regrets? I regret my family, my surroundings, my life. His ability to answer my questions is incredibly powerful, but it's only half the story. I soon meet Pincus again, this time with an added dimension. I want to reach out and shake his hand. Paul Debevic is the Institute's chief visual officer. It's his mission to make sure Pincus looks as real as possible. Well, hopefully Pincus looks 3D. Yeah. And you'll notice we're not wearing 3D glasses, but we see him in 3D. And as we move around, you can actually go all the way around. Gosh, the it's like I can look right around behind him. Over there. 200 tiny projectors run simultaneously to create the 3D effect. There's incredible depth when you're standing this close to him. This is the idea, is to try to make it look like he's sitting in front of you. In a matter of months, they'll merge the two technologies. I will answer any questions. You so people can talk directly to a 3D Pincus, making the experience feel even more real. 